Hi there, today we're going to be tying up the Darner Foam Dragonfly Nymph. This is a fantastic still water pattern to have. You can fish it with a floating line or an intermediate line in shallow water in the reeds. You can fish it with a type 3, type 5 on a drop off like a shoal, or with a type 7 and dredge it along the bottom. It really picks up the fish, so let's get started. Above you'll see a materials list. Those are all the materials that you will need to create your Dragonfly Nymph. Uh, some of them you can substitute, such as the UTC 70 and tan. You can use an olive, which will give you um, olive ribs. And same with the scud back, you can change that to a dark olive color, or a dark green color, to match the, uh, the body of your dragonfly nymph. So the first thing you're going to do is take your hook and put the eye on the edge of your 2 millimeter uh, brown foam. Then you're going to trace a line along the shank of the hook right to the curve. When you get to the curve, you're going to just put a little T. You're then going to lift the hook up and put the eye right at the T and trace another line from the eye of the hook to the curve of the hook along the shank. You're then going to make a small oval-like shape at the top, which will be the underside of your dragonfly nymph, and then make a large, right at the T, make a large oval shape which will be the top, which will fold over for the top part of your dragonfly nymph. You're then going to make a mirror image of the oval shape that you made on the bottom and the oval shape that you made at the top, trying to keep it as symmetrical as possible. You'll then run two lines from the top part of your oval shape right up about the length of the middle line. Go ahead and cut out the shape that you just drew. Uh, when you're cutting this out, use uh, an all-purpose set of fly tying scissors. Don't use your uh, ultra-sharp, ultra-accurate ones because you will dull them very quickly cutting up all the foam when you're making these. You're then going to take your hook and puncture it right where you put the T, just like you see above there. So you'll have the eye of the hook facing the front of the small oval shape. You'll then tie in your UTC 70 and tan just behind the eye, do about four wraps, and then you're gonna grab your tip of your foam and just tie it down so you're maybe about an eighth of the hook shank from the eye. Then grab your scud back in dark brown and cut a little point in it, and that piece will be about three centimeters long. Take that little point and tie it in close to the eye of the hook so the length of the scud back is facing towards the curve of the hook. Tie it in with about four wraps and then fold it forward and tie it in with another four wraps so the excess is hanging over the eye of the hook. You're now ready to start building the segmentation for the bottom part of your nymph. The easiest way to do that is to invert the fly so you have the hook facing up. Then you get a clear view of the segments you're building. You're going to want to build about four or five of these with two smaller ones in the front two larger ones in the middle, and then one smaller one in the back again. When you're building these segmentations, you only want to do a couple wraps, two or three tops, because you're going to be going back over it again with the top part, and you don't want to build up too much bulk. Once you finish the bottom segments of your fly, you're ready to start working on the top. You're going to take that large chunk of foam or oval-shaped foam that was hanging out the back and fold it over the segments. You're then going to want to make one small segment over that large part of foam uh, close to the back part of the hook, right where the curve is. That small segment can be very tricky. You have to do two loose wraps to kind of start it and then slowly cinch it down, making sure, kind of finessing it in place. Um, when you're doing this, make sure you avoid the hook point as it can cut your thread or, or splice it and you'll have to retie it in there. You're then going to lift up the large oval shape of foam and wind your thread around to get to that first rear segment closest to the um, curve of the hook. Once there, fold your foam back over and do three wraps on top of it, right where that segment is. You're going to repeat that process. You'll then fold the large foam back, wrap your thread around to get up to the second segment. You'll then do that all the way up till you've completed all four or five of your segments, going back and forth lifting the foam up, going, moving to the next segment, folding the foam back over, tying it in, and then again to the next segment up, right up till you hit 
where you first tied in your thread by your scud back. You're now going to tie off your UTC 70 tan with a five whip turn finish and then tie in your gel spun thread uh, right where you just tied off your uh, UTC 70. You're then going to take that long piece of foam and you're going to fold it back. You're then going to do three wraps over the foam just in front of the small segment at the front closest to the eye. Do three wraps over it, cinch it down, and then do a wrap just in front of the foam, uh, just over top of the eye. Come back, do three more wraps to tighten it down, and then another one just in front of the foam over the eye. This really secures down the top part of that foam, which is gonna be used to create your eyes. Once that's completed, go ahead and do a five turn whip finish over those wraps. That's just a little bit of insurance in case your fly starts to unravel on you. Once that's done, go ahead, grab your scissors and just cut off the excess. When you're doing this, use caution not to cut any of your segments because you will ruin all those pretty segments you just did on the top part of your fly. Then take your thread and wrap it over all that excess foam that's left over from your cut. Do as many wraps as you need to to get it nice and flat, but don't do too many where you start building up too much bulk. Okay, now it's time to build the eyes on your fly. You're going to do this by making a figure eight motion with your thread. So when you're working on the left eye or the eye furthest away from you, you're going to be moving your thread towards the rear of the hook. Do that about two or three wraps over that, and then do two or three wraps where you did your whip finish, and then you're gonna be moving your thread towards the front of the hook, building the eye closest to you. This is hard to explain, but if you can see which direction my bobbin's going when I'm making my eyes, it kind of gives you a better idea. Once complete, you should have a dumbbell shape of eyes um, made out of that foam. Once you're happy with that shape, go ahead and do a few wraps uh, just behind those eyes. Now comes the fun part of the fly, the paint job. For this one, I'm just using a brown Sharpie, um, but in the past I've used uh, olives, greens, black stripes. Uh, you can put in a, a light yellow to make it look like it's molting. Uh, you can be as creative as you want. Uh, just make sure that you do use um, a bit of Sharpie uh, just behind the eyes of the fly on the white GSP thread, on the top part, on the sides, and the uh, underneath on the thorax just so it matches the rest of your pattern. For the bottom part of this fly, or the abdomen section, I like to use a lighter marker than I used on the top. This creates a counter shading effect, which is um, a lot like what you see in the naturals. They'll have a dark um, part on the top and a lighter abdomen section. Makes for a real attractive feature in your flies. Next, go ahead and grab your black Sharpie and just color in all those big foam eyes to create those big black bulging eyes you see in the dragonfly nymphs. You're then going to grab eight fibers of pheasant tail and tie it into the eye closest to you. You'll then repeat the process on the other side. Tie it in eight strands of pheasant tail. Use about two wraps on each side, keeping it loose so you can adjust your lengths. How you're going to adjust your links is you're going to pull the pheasant tail fibers back and see if they just go past the last segment of your body. That makes for a good length. Once you're happy with that, do a four or five solid wraps to tighten it all down and then cut off the excess pheasant tail. You'll then grab your brown sharpie and just mark in um, the top part of the fly and the thorax and the sides where you just tied in your pheasant tail. You're then going to grab your scud back and pull it over the top part of your eyes. Try and keep it nice and even so it folds your eyes nice and evenly in between. And then you're going to go two wraps just to hold it down. And once you get it so the scud back's nice and parallel with the body of your fly, do a five turn whip finish and tie it off and cut off your thread. You're now going to grab your scud back and pull it towards the eyes of your fly. You're going to make a 45 degree angle just above the right eye of your fly. You're then going to take the scud back and flip it over towards the rear of the hook. You're then going to make another 45 degree angle opposite the one that you just made. 
This creates the wing case for your fly. And lastly, you're going to take a little bit of head cement or Sally Hansen or UV resin, and you're just going to put a little coating over your thorax and a little bit on the top part where you tied off on your scud back. And I like to put a little bit on my ribs on the bottom and a little bit on the top. This just gives you a really solid fly, um, you know, that can hold together and, and last for a few good fish. Well, there you have it, folks. That is your Darner Foam Dragonfly Nymph. It's been a real great pattern for me. Uh, very versatile, like I said, you can fish it from a floating line in the shallow all the way down to a fasting type seven. It's um, a real workhorse pattern like that. So be creative with them, tie some up, tie some in with some different colors, try some greens, put on some stripes, whatever you want, it's totally up to you. Um, definitely recommend it. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, go ahead and, and subscribe. Uh, something else too is uh, check out my Instagram at Van Fly Fishing. Lots of patterns up there. Um, Going to be posting some more videos and all those fantastic things. So um, have a look there too. Thanks again for watching. Uh, tight lines and uh, hope to see you on the water.